video is about how to stay on budget as a single parent. The rules ain't the same for everybody. So stay tuned for those quick tips on how to stay on budget as a single parent. Nothing moves till you move, work it out. Finance looking right, work it out though. Mind your body right, work it out though. Tip number one. Normally would be stay on budget, but tip number one in this case is going to be let's get established needs and wants. As a single parent, let's just only do needs for a while until we get this thing on track. Not once, not because somebody was begging and crying for it, not because somebody thinks they got good grades, they should be rewarded for doing what they should be doing anyway. Let's not do any discretionary spending. Let's not do any discretionary spending. Let's not do any extra nothing. Just take care of mortgage, rent, food, um, car and car insurance. That's step one for a single parent. Step number two, it may sound like it's cumbersome and it may be a little hard starting out. Of course you work. You really should try to do some planned meals minimally for lunch. Prepare your meals for the whole week. That'll help overspending, buying lunches with everybody, um, spending money that you really can't really spend at this time. Do your meal prepping and start off with something you really, really like and prep your meals for a week. Start that out for yourself for work. Add into that preparing your meals or at least planning your meals for you and the children for the whole week. That hopefully, that hopefully will help doing any type of impulse stops at Outback, at McDonald's, or any of those enticing places that you're riding past on your way from work or from picking up the kids. We're gonna do meal prep for ourselves for lunch and we're also going to do meal planning for the whole family for the whole week. Because we're not going to waste any of our money on DoorDash. Everybody at work can do what they want to do. We're bringing our lunch. That's tip number two. Tip number three. We got to have an emergency fund. Like everybody has to have an emergency fund. But when you was, you know, a single parent, everything is riding on you. You got to have an emergency fund. Every single paycheck. Put some money aside. $20, $25. Use the savings challenge book. You got to have an emergency emergency fund. You must have an emergency fund. Emergency fund could be getting the car repair. It could be, you know, co-pays for the children. It could be anything like that. You need to get an emergency fund. That's like tip number three. Probably should be one, but it's tip number three on here. You must have an emergency fund. That's really more of a priority than saving. Your savings has to be an emergency fund because we got to have money just in case some things happen with the kids. We got our money. That is tip number three. Emergency fund. That's the savings challenge that you need to be doing. Now that we've got the basic housekeeping things done, now tip number four. Create a budget. A budget is the money that you bring home versus the money that is going out. It's not your gross income. It's not the $3,000 you're bringing home every two weeks. It's really the $2,100 you're bringing home every two weeks. And depending on, you know, how many children you have, you know, it depends on how much money you need to, to survive and live. So, let's write down exactly what you are bringing home. Don't include overtime because most of the time that's not consistent and you end up living beyond your means. It's not due overtime. Let's do our basic 40 hours time whatever the hourly rate is because relying on overtime that's when the jobs cut the overtime and they realize <laughs> that you're relying on it so let's not rely on overtime that's not considered you know you're part of your regular income overtime money really should be used to put toward that emergency fund because that's extra money that you normally don't get in the check that shouldn't be used to go out and, and you know spend it on an extra meal or just buy some things you really don't need. That's for an emergency fund. So if something happens to the car, you're not, you don't have to buy everybody. It really don't become an urgent situation because you're prepared. You have to really be prepared when you are the only person taking care of yourself and other people. You just, it's just, you just cannot rely on other people. You have to rely on you. So you should have an emergency fund. That's bare bones. So 
we're gonna take our money $2,100 every two weeks that's what it is and you back into that thing you put your mortgage and your rent first you got to have a place to live car no car insurance those things you have to have you must have a car to get to work and the emergency fund if the car breaks down we got an emergency fund to go have the car repaired because if you got a car note and the car break down you do know you got to take care of both of those the place you bought it from and the finance company don't care about anything anything like that so you must do the repairs even though the car is being financed that's why the emergency fund is so important. Without that particular vehicle, you may not be able to get to work or even take the children to school. So, let's get those expenses listed as well, along with how much money we're bringing home. After that, that is how much money you have left to put into your emergency fund or your savings challenge. If you could just do this, stick to it for at least 90 days you will see a change in your situation or you will have a better picture of what your situation really is it may be time to get you a side hustle job it may be time for you to become a luggage delivery person or uber person or instacart there are so many options out there or third shift customer service rep work from home but if you do this for 60 to 90 days you'll have a real picture of what your real finances are not what you think not what you was told not what you hoped it would be what it is and we need to know exactly what it is how much you got coming in and how much you got going out I know with overtime that you are making all of this money however do not forget to look into government assistance programs you may still qualify even though you have a full-time job and the pay is good to you to the government it may not be as much so stay on top of those government programs um, assistance with um, rent they even do assistance with buying a vehicle uh, assistance with food medical insurance I know in some states the medical insurance is great out the gate you know try to get their medical insurance that'll be less of a copay or less you would have deducted out of your check to pay for medical expenses for yourself and the children so stay on top of those government assistance programs and from time to time make it a habit go in there and check and see what the new programs are things are constantly changing and people don't tell you things like that so you spend the time if your kids are old enough somebody go in there and look and see what type of assistant programs um, are new or that they have out there that you guys qualify for because people won't tell you they'll just be getting in and you're trying to figure out how they get in the new roof with no job and <laughs> you working because the government came in even if you have a mortgage they'll come in and they'll help you get some assistance for some of the things that you have going on in your life that was tip number four tip number five negotiate with your bills when I say negotiate I mean try to get the amount lower than what it is um, I don't mean negotiate and have it spread out when you just they're gonna make you pay a lump sum down the road um, sometimes you have to do payment plans like that but right now I'm talking about negotiate with your bills if you have some bills that are you know old see if you can negotiate and do a settlement with those as far as payment plans go of course we all try not to get behind on our bills but things happen negotiate with the bills see if you can pay the lesser amount as far as payment plans go if you get on a payment plan for example a light company and they allow you to pay a lesser amount than what you owe please if possible try to do additional payments because what's going to happen five months from now they're going to want a lump sum of the other payments that you have not made so make the arrangements keep the arrangements and try to add as much to it as you can because we don't want it to snowball and you don't have any power or you owe a lot of money you got to start begging money from other people that was my last and final tip for this video please share like and subscribe and come back to my channel for more tips